6 verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. What can we learn from this verse? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. In other words, we do not wrestle against people. According to one of the commandments Jesus left to us, we are supposed to love our neighbor as ourself. Hence, if you have a problem today that involves another person, it's not them that you should be fighting. It is the unseen enemy. There is an invisible enemy, and he's counting on the fact that you forget that he's there. Your enemy, the devil, does a fantastic job disguising himself behind the tangible physical problems in your life. But the wonderful thing is that the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11, Satan will not outsmart us, for we are not ignorant of his schemes, for we are led by the Spirit of God. According to Romans 8.14, for as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, they are the children of God. The enemy is not all powerful, but he is very powerful. He has the power to create circumstances and series of events in your life in order to discourage you. Look at the life of Job. Once God gave the enemy permission to attack Job, he had a field day with his life. He drop kicked him in his health. He suplexed him in his wealth and annihilated his family, all in an attempt to take away his faith. And for those of you who believe that the enemy can't physically affect your life and your surroundings, read on the story of Job. Although the enemy attacked Job, he never came out in the open and said to Job, it's me causing you all this pain and sorrow. And that's what he wants to do in your life. He wants to hide behind circumstances so that you forget he's often the one influencing the negative things happening in your life. But thank God for his word, which shows us that the enemy cannot alter God's plan. For according to Jeremiah 29 verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. God has a plan for your life. But what we need to know is that the enemy is plotting and scheming against you. Him and his demonic army are watching you, studying your tendencies, your patterns, your strengths, your weaknesses, in order to devise a plan to take you off the course God has set for you in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Why? Firstly, because God created you and God loves you. But there is another reason we often forget and forget to mention. And that is from the moment you gave your life to Christ, you became a high priority target. Because he knew that you were saved and destined for heaven. So he hates you for that. He's angry that you're now walking by faith and not by sight. He's angry at the fact that the hand of the Lord is now over you. He's angry that the faith of the Lord is on your life. He's angry at the fact that he can no longer dominate you with fear and worry. That's why he's after you. And that's why Ephesians 6 tells us in plain black and white that we are in the middle of a spiritual war. Although the enemy is plotting and scheming against you and watching you, the great news is that God is watching you. Psalms 121 verse 8. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forever. Whatever the enemy throws against you, God will always use it to his advantage, his plan for your life, if you don't give up. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 50 verse 20, As for you, you meant it for evil against me, but God meant it for good. But the problem is that most people don't know they're in the middle of a battle, and just believe things in their life just happen, or they are an unlucky person. Where in the Bible does it speak of being lucky or unlucky? Nothing just happens. There is always see, controlling what you can see. And whatever you are dealing with today, it was set against you. 
and you're busy letting the devil defeat you. Your finances are crumbling. Your marriage is crumbling. Your emotions are crumbling. And you're losing your mind. And you're struggling to keep it all together. I mean, you've got trouble coming from every angle. The fact is you're not winning. And the enemy has come in like a flood with all these problems. But thank God for the word of God. Because it says in Isaiah 59 verse 19, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. This verse means that whatever level of attack is measured against you, God will respond with a measure to counter that attack. Your finances will be restored. Your marriage will be restored. Your emotions will be restored. God will restore to you the years the enemy has stolen from you. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise a standard. What does that mean? That means the tougher the game, the greater the strength. The more devils that come after you, the more angels will protect you. In other words, God is saying to you, whatever the enemy may throw at you, the Holy Spirit will give you the power to overcome it. God wouldn't let you go through it if he didn't give you the power to overcome it. Whatever hell that you are going through right now, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Each and every one of you have a promised land in their lives. I don't know what it is for you. For some, it's a career. For others, it's to start that church. For others, it's to start that business. For others, it's raising that child. For others, it's recovering your health. For others, it's coming out of debt. For others, it's overcoming addiction. You know what the promised land is for you. But just like the children of Israel had to fight to reach their promised land, you will have to fight for every inch to reach the promised land. And our fights as children of God are on two fronts. Number one is fighting to read the word of God because it is the word of God that builds our faith. It is the word of God that gives you faith to endure when you've been attacked. It is the word of God that gives you faith to stand up when you've been knocked down. It is the word of God that gives you the faith to fight back when your back is against the wall. It is the word of God that will give you the courage to stand while the storm is raging. It is the word of God that will give you the ability to walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, the situation may be bleak. Yes, the situation may look dark. Yes, 